The office building stood tall amidst the bustling streets of Tokyo, its glass windows reflecting the city's vibrant lights. Within its walls, an eerie air lingered, shrouding the space in an unsettling atmosphere. The employees of the Japanese work office had heard whispers and rumors, but nothing prepared them for what awaited them as the clock struck midnight. Kazuki, a diligent salaryman, often found himself working late into the night, striving to meet deadlines and fulfill the expectations placed upon him. He was familiar with the legends surrounding the office, stories of restless spirits trapped within its confines. However, dismissing them as mere superstitions, he had never paid much attention until that fateful night. As the rest of the office emptied out, leaving Kazuki alone with his mountain of paperwork, an ominous stillness settled in. He had just finished stapling a stack of documents when a sudden gust of wind blew through the room, rustling the papers and extinguishing the flickering lights. The room plunged into darkness, leaving Kazuki in an eerie silence. Unease gnawed at his nerves as he fumbled for his phone, hoping to use its light to navigate his way. But as he turned on the screen, the illumination revealed a spectral figure standing before him. A woman in a tattered kimono, her face distorted with anguish, reached out her ethereal hand, her long black hair flowing in an unseen breeze. Frozen with fear, Kazuki's voice escaped him as the ghostly figure drew closer. The room filled with an icy chill, and whispers filled the air, echoing through the empty halls. In a whispery voice, the apparition spoke, her words sending shivers down his spine. Leave this place, she hissed. This office is cursed, and those who linger here past midnight shall suffer the wrath of the tormented souls. Unable to move, Kazuki watched as other specters materialized around him, each one more tortured than the last. The office space transformed into a ghostly realm, where the walls bled memories of past workers who had met their untimely ends within those very walls. Desperation overcame Kazuki as he pleaded with the vengeful spirits. Please, I mean no harm. I am just trying to make a living. Spare me, and I will leave this place forever. The spirits paused, their eyes filled with sorrow and anger. Kazuki's sincerity seemed to touch their ethereal hearts, and they slowly dissipated into the darkness, leaving behind an office haunted by the remnants of their pain. With trembling hands, Kazuki gathered his belongings and raced toward the exit, feeling the weight of their gazes upon him. As he stepped out into the city streets, he glanced back at the office building, now quiet and unassuming. The incident had shaken him to the core, and he knew he could never return. Weeks came after days, and Kazuki found solace in a new workplace, where he shared his eerie encounter with his colleagues. They listened, their eyes wide with fascination and disbelief, yet none dared to challenge the legitimacy of his story. However, as time went on, Kazuki began experiencing strange occurrences. Shadows danced at the corners of his vision, and whispers echoed in his ears, even outside of the office. The spirits that had haunted the old building seemed to have followed him, their vengeance unquenched. One night, while working late at his new office, Kazuki found himself alone once again. The familiar sense of foreboding settled in, as if the spirits from the previous office had returned to claim him. Suddenly the lights flickered and died, plunging the room into complete darkness. Heart pounding, Kazuki reached for his phone, only to find it missing from his pocket. Panic washed over him as the whispers grew louder, their voices filled with anger and torment. The room felt oppressively cold, as if the spirits themselves had encased him in their icy grip. And then, a voice, a chilling, otherworldly voice, whispered from the darkness. You cannot escape us, Kazuki. We have followed you, and we will torment you until you join us in eternal suffering. A cold breath brushed against the back of Kazuki's neck, causing him to shudder involuntarily. He stumbled backward, searching for an exit, but the room seemed to have transformed into a labyrinth, its walls shifting and distorting, trapping him within their spectral embrace. With each step, the whispers grew louder, their menacing tones echoing through the corridors of his mind. Shadows writhed and twisted, taking on ghastly forms that reached out for him, their spectral hands grazing his skin. Desperation fueled his actions as Kazuki ran blindly through the ever-changing maze of the office. Yet no matter which path he took, he found himself back where he started, trapped within the haunted realm of the spirits. As the hours passed, Kazuki's mind began to unravel. Sanity slipped away, consumed by the relentless terror. The spirits toyed with him, 
appearing and disappearing in flashes of ethereal light, their distorted faces contorted with sadistic glee. In his final moments of lucidity, Kazuki realized the truth. The spirits had never intended to let him escape. They had lured him in, ensnaring his soul within their supernatural realm, where he would forever be tormented by the horrors of the office. And so, the once diligent salaryman became a permanent fixture of the haunted office, his anguished screams merging with the chilling whispers that echoed through the walls. Kazuki's fate served as a grim reminder to those who dared to challenge the legends, a warning that the spirits of the office would forever exact their revenge on those who entered their domain. To this day, the abandoned office stands as a haunting testament, its walls steeped in the misery of the tormented souls. The whispers of their anguish continue to reach the ears of passers-by, a reminder that some spirits are not meant to rest, forever seeking retribution for the injustices inflicted upon them in life. And as darkness falls, the office awakens, its ghostly inhabitants forever trapped in a cycle of torment, awaiting their next unwitting victim.